Six Flags recently announced that they will be closing 15 rides across the Six Flags chain of parks. But I have an idea on what will be leaving Six Flags over Georgia in particular. Let me explain. Hey guys, Miguel here, back with a brand new video here today. Six Flags recently announced that they are closing 15 underperforming rides across the Six Flags chain in order to fund new rides each year as they normally do, but weren't able to for 2021 due to the global pandemic that impacted everything in 2020. After speaking with park presidents, engineers, and maintenance teams, Mike Spanos, the CEO of Six Flags, states that they have concluded which rides they will redeploy at each park, which rides need to be refurbished, and lastly, which rides they need to remove entirely and to reduce maintenance costs. But with that being said, I wanted to focus on my home park and discuss what I believe could and would leave Six Flags over Georgia if anything were going to happen there. And what I mean by that is that a ride doesn't have to be touched at every park. So there are three rides in particular that I feel have the potential to be removed from the park. The first option being Harley Quinn Wild World. The Tilt-A-Whirl model isn't very appealing to the majority of park goers these days, especially one that isn't very exhilarating compared to the other rides in the Gotham City section of the park. This ride isn't very quick, exciting, it's kind of clunky, although they did do some maintenance on it for the 2020 season which made the ride smoother and quieter. Plus I feel that the park with the whole new revamp of the all new Gotham City section to a more modern, spacious, and cleaner overall look. They want to permanently get rid of the classic carnival look that the old Gotham City section had once before. Although people aren't too hyped about a scrambler that was added to the park, but overall removing this ride, Harley Quinn, would add more walkway to Mindbender and to the newly revamped Gotham City gift store. So I don't see anything replacing this attraction per se. Lastly to mention as well that every ride in the park from big to small that was open or temporarily closed is mentioned on the website but Harley Quinn Wild World formerly known as Harley Quinn Spin Sanity is not mentioned on the website at the time of recording. Now you all may also be wondering why would they rename the ride and add a new sign at the ride's entrance? Well in my opinion, all of the ride signs in the all new Gotham City section all gotta change besides the Joker Chaos Coaster, which I feel was a bundle package deal because it's painfully obvious they took a cheaper approach with the look of the new signs. Therefore, if they simply just wanted to remove the ride, it wouldn't be that much of a burden to do so even though the ride did open in 2015. Next on this list brings a splashing down on the Log Jamboree. Now the Log Jamboree manufactured by Aerodynamics has been operating at Six Flags Over Georgia since 1968. This attraction usually operates from March till the beginning of November, but after that it closes for holiday in the park. A lot of you all may know that I am a huge water ride fan and definitely believe that the park is in dire need of more water attractions, especially in the summertime as they help beat the heat of that scorching hot park. But one issue with this ride that also helps it along with Dahlonega Mine Train, which was an honorable mention to be put on this list, but wasn't put on this list due to the same thing that might say the log jamboree is the history dating back to the opening years of six flags over georgia so i didn't put delonaga on there because it's the sole opening day coaster at the park but the log jamboree i see facing a different fate possibly by leaving the park i don't believe that this ride is safe just like the first ever log flume located at six flags over texas is standing but not operating and it's not being taken care of at all and has nothing put in place like a plaque or anything to really pay respect to how iconic that ride actually was being that it was the first ever log flume ever created at any theme park. Although the Log Jamboree has seen better days, it isn't the most mind-blowing flume ride in the world and is iconic at the park. I think it's possible it could leave, but I more so think that it is more on the verge of just getting refurbished. Just like Mike Spanos mentioned that some rides are going to get refurbished while other rides will be staying and others, 15 in particular, will be leaving. Plus, I don't truly see that much of a benefit of the ride leaving the park because it honestly doesn't hold a big footprint at the park because it's lodged between the train tracks behind Daredevil Dive and the Georgia Scorcher. So it truly doesn't take up much space so if keyword is if if the log jamboree were to leave I feel like there's not much that you could put there to replace it due to the majority of the ride being hidden in the trees but if they were going to put something there just to say then it would most likely be a flat ride of some sort but if they wanted to put a coaster there I can see how a 4d free spin could work more so toward the end of the ride here which could be a pretty cool fit to have a coaster with a bright color scheme to complement the front entrance of the park with the newly painted Georgia Scorcher Goliath that is in desperate need of a new paint job and lastly the beauty of twisted cyclones blue and white color scheme making it a great first impression so adding a 4d free spin near the front could really show off the appeal of the coaster lineup at this park last on this list brings us to thunder river rapids 
Thunder River Rapids, in my opinion, of the rides on this list that has the highest potential to leave the park. Let me explain. Thunder River Rapids operates as well mainly the whole season up until it starts getting cold. But this past season of the 2020 season saw this ride face many obstacles as it almost didn't open period for the 2020 season. Due to many maintenance and mechanical issues, the park along with Thunder River Rapids opened up for the 2020 season on March 7, 2020, which we were there to experience the opening day of the 2020 season. But unfortunately, during our time there at the park that day. Thunder River Rapids closed. So Thunder River Rapids, it's closed. It's closed today? Yeah. Why it's is it closed? closed? It's not closed today. It's just under technical difficulties right now. Oh. Like 15, 20 minutes. So it will open today? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for letting me know. Alright, so Thunder River Rapids is currently down for about 15 to 20 more minutes. It did go down where the water, I believe, was leaking and people were on the raft ride and they had to be evacuated because it dried out. The water was being pumped in and then it, uh, I guess it ran dry. The water just disappeared. I know it's sunny out here, but it ain't that hot. But uh, they're working on it right now, so that's really great. It should be back open in about 15 or 20 minutes, so just down for technical difficulties. But they're on it. Shout out to Six Flags. Everything's good. Everybody's safe. Thunder River Rapids closed due to the trough running a leak with guests riding in the rapids while the trough was running dry. So they had to close it to refill it back up with water. So apparently the issues that they were having still continued to take shape during the opening day of the 2020 season. No one was injured, and yes, the ride did reopen. After this, the park closed and reopened again in mid-June on Monday, June 15, 2020. Thunder reopened again with it. This ride continued to have issues during this past season along with having such continuously long wait time attached to it as you can see. But the ride was only open till the end of the summer as when I visited on September 12th to film the preview of the Hallowfest Halloween event at Six Flags Over Georgia. But when I left the park, all of the rafts were just left abandoned in the parking lot, which really left me thinking along with the issues the ride was having, the leak that occurred, the ride ride almost not opening for the 2020 season in general, then seeing these rafts just left out, it left me concluding that I can definitely see this ride leaving the park, being that it is a maintenance nightmare and they're trying to cut maintenance costs tremendously. Now, could this happen? Yes. Will this happen? Possibly. But what I feel could replace this if it were to happen and Thunder River Rapids would leave Six Flags Over Georgia would be an SNS launch coaster. Just like the new for 2019 Max Force coaster at Six Flags Great America. Even if it's an exact clone of that ride, I really feel that it will be beneficial to the park being that the park no longer has a launch coaster since Viper and is in need of a launch coaster to really round out Six Flags Over Georgia's coaster lineup. If you take an aerial view approach of the area where Thunder River Rapids currently is, you can see how massive the plot of land that Thunder River takes up and if need be there's so much unused parking lot space that can be utilized to expand but to be honest it wouldn't be necessary to touch the parking lot because there's already so much space where Thunder River Rapids is located currently plus if you wanted to add in something else you could remove the go-karts which a lot of you are a huge fan of that being gone anyways especially it being a paper ride upcharge attraction but in regards to a launch coaster that I'm referring to this is what the majority wants and I think it's doable within hopes that the Six Flags chain has a better 2021 Park attendance stays up. They save money where they can, as they mentioned in the conference call, and get to build something new in 2022 again at the park. The last two coasters built at Six Flags Over Georgia was a new for 2011 Daredevil Dive Gersler Euro Fighter at the cost of $9 million. And then the new for 2006 B&M Hyper Coaster Goliath at the cost of $20 million. While a launch coaster like Max Force cost Six Flags Great America $15 million, which would perfectly fit right in between what Daredevil Dive and Goliath cost Six Flags Over Georgia, which I feel this move is needed, which the park hasn't had a new coaster in 10 years now, being that it is 2021, and that it's actually doable for 2022 or 2023, being that any money that they gain from reopening in 2020, and then also having a good 2021, it is definitely doable for 2022 or 2023 for Six Flags Over Georgia to get a brand new roller coaster. But 15 rides are indeed leaving across the Six Flags chain of parks, but which ones have remained to be known, but that we shall see in 2021, I'm sure. But with that being said, if any rides were indeed selected from Six Flags Over Georgia to be removed that are maintenance nightmares or underperforming rides, which ones in your opinion would be first on the chopping block to leave? Also, I'm gonna mention this again. Does anyone else feel that the new for 2016 kids revamp 
revamped area of Bugs Bunny Boomtown is a bust because I didn't want to put that on this list of something that needs to be changed to add an awesome coaster to, or as I mentioned in this video here, add a nice family coaster or a kid's coaster. Again, you can check out this video right here if you want to know more about it. But lastly, if you could have a new coaster model realistically come to the park, what would it be? Let me know in the comment section down below because I would love to hear from you. Thank you all so much for watching. Till my next video, take care, be well, and have a thrilling day. So if you enjoyed the video, you can support the channel via Patreon, where we have all new live streams and exclusive content and giveaways that are dedicated to the patrons on the exclusive Miguel the Annual Passholder Patreon page. And also, if you like looking nice, you can support the channel via our merchandise shop at annualpassholder.shop. You can find amazing t-shirts and hoodies such as this one that you guys can purchase for the low. And feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn it from red to gray and like this video if you enjoyed yourself. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much and have a thrilling day.